Welcome into the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and it is time to look at the Detroit Lions backfield. Now, unfortunately, I did delete any of my side notes that I had when I created my Miami Dolphins backfield uh, notes. I, I, I got ahead of myself and forgot I hadn't recorded this video yet. So, um... I'm recording these videos back to back, but yeah, if I stumble anywhere, that's part of the reason why. But let's let's just take a look at what we've had, and um, this video has been ready to go for a while now, so I haven't seen this. So as a reminder, we'll be looking at uh, basically are these guys worth taking at their ADP? Is Jameer Gibbs worth the RB4 off the board ADP 12? Is David Montgomery worth being taken as the 20th running back off the board ADP 69? I'll be looking at a bunch of projections. Now, you're welcome to disagree with these specific projections, but at least that should help give you an idea if you think I'm being too conservative, if you think I'm too low on something. Well, okay, now you think even more of that player than I do, and we'll see the end result of it based on how running backs performed last year, and same with uh, in the opposite. You know, if I think if you think I'm being too aggressive, if you think for some reason the usage will go down compared to where I have it, or whatnot, you can get at least an idea of how much you agree or disagree with the end result here, and in what direction, and that should help you to help determine what you think of these guys as well. Once again, even if you don't agree with exactly what I came to. A couple of quick announcements. Up on the website, you can now find uh, rankings for every position. They've been up there for a while. They're getting updated very regularly with all the news you know, as we get closer to your drafts. But also, speaking of those drafts, I have a little surprise for you in the term of uh, bar sheets. So you go up on the website, www.theffwords. There's a link down in the description. I know it's a beautiful website. And right here on the front page you can just click on this uh, printable draft sheet that I have and each week I am going through I am taking the most recent ADPs and I'm taking my rankings and I'm taking the average of the two and that is the order that I am putting these players in in addition to that just a reminder every Thursday night 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time come visit me we're going live we're drafting off of sleeper it's free to draft off sleeper you don't need a credit card or anything like that you can join on in we got a little group going each and every week and uh, throughout the week leading into the Labor Day holiday up into that weekend, which is the most common weekend that most people will be drafting. I will go live like each and every night or close to uh, as often as possible. I'll be going live that week. So uh, come join us, to get some practice reps in before you get into your, your actual league drafts. And uh, with that, let's just get right on into this video. I like to try to keep these relatively quick. So uh, Gibbs and Montgomery working over two players here that we're going to have to draft. And as of uh, week six of 2023, the week that David Montgomery gets injured, he returns in week 10. There's a week nine by there. Gibbs takes over as the RB1 from that point on forward for the season. The red zone work gets split 50-50 once David Montgomery returns there in week 10. So we have a 12-game sample size from week 10 on that includes the playoffs where we have both of them on the field. And that's what I want to use. Think this ultimately there's only a two games that we're really not looking at, and that's the two games where Gibbs was alone without David Montgomery there, uh, and games earlier, but once Gibbs really took over as the RB1 de facto in this backfield. So from week 10 on, the averages for Gibbs that we will be using to help us come up with some projections here were 11 and one quarter carries per game, 2.9 receptions per game, and one touchdown per game. For Montgomery, we got 13.6 carries per game, so still out carrying Gibbs, but only 1.3 receptions per game, and those are always valuable. And he actually got out touchdowned by Gibbs, uh, 0.75 touchdowns per game. Still, I mean, 1.75 touchdowns per game from the running backs. Just insane how many rushing touchdowns that this Lions team gets. And, you know, Jamal Williams, uh, just a year before last, too, put up some insane touchdown numbers, so... That is something that we can expect that these touchdown numbers don't like. Just It wasn't a flash in the pan. It's been a two-year now thing where they really, really push uh, these running backs once they get into the red zone and, and getting them into the end zone because that significant advantage that they have with that offensive line, which uh, might be... No, I think it's still pretty darn strong this year. Jameer Gibbs, fantasy points. We take those 11 and a quarter carries. We multiply it by his average yards per carry, 58 yards. That's 5.8 fantasy points. Take those 2.9 receptions. It's about three receptions, right? So 1.5 fantasy points per game. 
Uh, even if you were to round it, it still you know would have been 1.5 from 2.9. And we take those 2.9 receptions, multiply them by the 6.1 yards per reception that Jameer Gibbs averaged, which comes to about 18 yards, 1.8 fantasy points per game. And we take that one touchdown per game, um, which is worth six fantasy points. We add all of those up, and that comes to 15.1 fantasy points per game, which was the running back five in 2023. Now let's look at David Montgomery. We take his 13.6 carries per game, multiply that by his 4.6 yards per game, 62 yards, 6.2 fantasy points, 1.3 receptions, about uh, a half point, a little over a half a point fantasy points per game, 0.6, 1.3 receptions times his 7.3 yards per reception. He gets 9 yards or 0.9 fantasy on average points from his receiving yards and uh, 0.75 touchdowns per game or on average about 4.5 Touch, uh, p- fantasy points per game from touchdowns. We add all those numbers up. That adds up to 12.2 fantasy points per game, which would be the running back 20, which I believe was uh, dead on to where he is currently going ADP. Will the usage remain the same, however? We got roughly 25 rushing attempts per game in 2023. Gibbs had uh, f- took 45% of those. Montgomery took 55% of those. What if they were to be split 60-40 in favor of Gibbs? Suddenly we're seeing Jameer Gibbs get 14.9 carries per game at 5.2 yards per carry. It'd be 77 yards. I think we could expect that yards per carry to maybe go down if his carries go up. Um, but you get an idea here, you know, looking at 7 plus fantasy points per game, 7.7 we came to here. 3.2 receptions per game. Just did a, a little bit of an increase there for his increased amount of time on the field. 1.6 fantasy points per game. Yeah, point one more. And we multiply that by our guards. Uh, still came to 19. I think that's ended up being the same number. Yet again, 1.9 fantasy points for receptions. We've got those numbers locked. We, we didn't quite finish the calculation there. I want to talk about touchdown regression, right? We didn't get to that touchdown number quite yet. Uh, 1.7 touchdowns per game in 2023 was first in the league, and the year before that, they were second in the league with 1.4 touchdowns per game on average from their running back, uh, rushing touchdowns for the most part from their running backs. So let's go with 1.4 rushing touchdowns per game instead of the 1.7. That's a reduction of like 18% or 82% of their production in 2023. So that... uh, Ultimately, that is a significant reduction, even though it doesn't feel like a big reduction, uh, which comes to about 12.3 rushing touchdowns instead of the 15 from that they had from week 10 on, to give you an idea of what that would look like. With the reduction, we came to about a half of a touchdown per game, but then uh, we came to this one receiving touchdown that he had, which I spelt receiving wrong. I see that in 12 games. Uh, so we added that one touchdown, so seven touchdowns over a 12-game span comes to 0.6 touchdowns per game. So now we take that, uh, that comes to 3.6 fantasy points you should see on the board there. So we multiply, add those up, all our fantasy points, and that comes to 14.8 fantasy points per game. So we're pretty fine there for Jameer Gibbs, running back eight. That's a little bit lower than we were. But when we look at David Montgomery's numbers, now things fall. You can see his, his picture just fell off. Montgomery, uh, that brings us down to 10.1 carries per game or 46 yards, 4.6 fantasy points, about one reception, a half of a fantasy point. Uh, pretty much similar there for the yards, uh, 0.7 fantasy points from the yards per game, I think down from nine. And then uh, half of a touchdown per game times six fantasy points equals three fantasy points. So um, you add those numbers up, that's 8.8 fantasy points. That's the running back 39 in 2023 on average per game. So a big reduction there. So we go uh, Jameer Gibbs uh, was the running back four. The projections here were running back five through eight. So is that running back four a little bit high? Uh, yeah, Maybe I believe I have him as my RB5, if I remember correctly. If I haven't changed anything on that, so um, you know, he's right in this, he's definitely in this five through eight group. You think that's like probably Kyron Williams, maybe is eight? Uh, yeah, he's in that group, you know, that's a for sure thing. Once again, running back four. Maybe a touch high, but uh, nothing too insane. But for David Montgomery, I do want to heed warning here. The projection came in from running back 20 to 39. So we are drafting him at his ceiling. And this is, I think, a, a very realistic expectation for this to possibly fall off a little bit from that ceiling. That's the end result there. 
Uh, I did end up moving Montgomery a little bit back in my rankings. Just not feeling super comfortable with drafting him at his ceiling. But uh, Jameer Gibbs still, I'm okay with drafting him uh, at or around his ceiling. Perfectly fine. And there you go. That is it for the Detroit backfield. Uh, Stay tuned to this series where we're going over the Miami Dolphins backfield soon. Uh, Getting to the end of being able to record more of these. But if you have any uh, recommendations, please drop them in the comments. And I believe I got one about Mike Evans. And I don't know if I'm going to get to that because... um, it's just not at the top of my priority list. Like you look at what Mike Evans did last year. There's not uh, the change in the offensive coordinator is a concern, but um, I think that's a little bit baked into his ADP. Regardless, you look like what he's done last year, what he's done every year of his career. He's been pretty darn steady Eddie there as one of the top end wide receivers. So I just, I don't think there's anything unique I could bring to his analysis outside of just keeping in mind that, you know, the, change in wide receiver offensive coordinator could uh bring some reduction and of course the age thing but he's just he's been timeless i think it's like uh julio jones one of these years uh, all of a sudden an injury is going to take him out he'll play for another three years and he'll never be the same but until that injury happens or until he's just not the same uh going into the season i'm gonna have some faith in that a little bit of risk with it kind of baked into the ap adp um you know there's my thoughts on him. Just uh, not too much to, to really cover uh, there. So thank you very much for tuning on in. Peace out. Miami Dolphins up next.